We are live streaming now. I like to just kind of hang out for a little bit while all my boxes and things pop up because sometimes it needs to be muted. Nope, it's already muted. Fantastic. I've got the chat box where I can see it. We're all good. I hope you all can see me okay. My webcam went kaput last week and my geek squad of one 11 year old boy and one 14 year old girl could not fix the problem. So maybe there's an, uh, a sponsor of the show out there <laughs> who wants to send in a new webcam or maybe you wanna send some donations. I don't know, we've got how many episodes now, Kirti? Maybe 30 some episodes with of amazing content from season one and season two of Goddess Vibrations, the spiritual sexual empowerment show, stuff you're not gonna hear other places, at least publicly. And uh, yeah, maybe you wanna send a donation, Natasha at oasisofawareness.com, that's my PayPal, because this is the Oasis of Awareness YouTube channel. So welcome back, Kirti, my co-hostess with the mostest. Um, so as we were saying before we went live, Kirti just led a group, a full, a full moon ritual group. I just led a group, my inclusion group with Kirti Shofar, Kirti Shofar, Kirti's partner Shofar um, is helping me co-facilitate and doing some Qigong in that group. So we've been swimming in the energies already and maybe some of those folks will be joining us also tonight if they're not tired of us yet. I know, right? Some people have to wait till the next day and you have your 6 a.m. practice in the morning, which I have not been so great at being bright eyed and bushy tailed for. So my intention is to end this in a reasonable amount of time tonight so that we can both show up in our best oh, and brightest tomorrow. Love that idea. Yeah. So tonight we're going to talk about uh, body blessings to transform trauma into treasures is what you originally had sent over. And um, I'm excited about this topic. I did a little video on Instagram today because I have been really focusing on my body a lot. I, I tend to, as far as like nutrition and that sort of thing. But the one thing that, the first thing that goes for me, which is what you're an expert in is movement. And I can get stuck you know i've got that taurus energy and it's like i like to like when i'm being lazy i kind of get stuck being lazy and then once i get the momentum to move then i'm moving and so i've managed to get myself into that movement with your help as well and um really just yeah just doing a lot of movement moving my body a lot and um what came to me is how important that is to cherish our bodies when we are let's say, uh, dating, or we're already in a relationship, because we need our partners to show up and treat us at minimum, as well as we treat ourselves, because otherwise, we're downgrading our lives, we're downgrading our abundance, we're downgrading our expansion, we're contracting. And so how can we do that? if we're beating up ourselves, if we're looking at our bodies and, and saying awful things, or we're like, oh, I hate this, or I hate this sagging skin, or these or that or another, which is what the culture teaches us to do as women. And we do it to each other. We'll like nitpick each other, right? That's how we were raised. Um, so how the heck are our partners going to treat us and our bodies with reverence when we can't even figure it out, right? It's so real. It's so... Yeah, that's the piece that's alive for me right now. And um, and yeah, I have very high standards in that of how I want to be treated just because I put so much time and energy into taking care of myself. And I do it partly for my family. So it's a whole cascade. And the feminine, the feminine is the glue of the family. The feminine is the, the glue of, of culture, the, fem the glue of the planet. It's the connection, it's the connecting energy that takes all the compartmentalized pieces and weaves them together, right? And so we have to, keep, she's like the fascia. We have to keep her healthy and fascia, strong. Fascia. <laughs> oh, not the same thing. <laughs> That's on her next album. <laughs> Kirti's Late Night Jams. <laughs> Slow jams. 
yeah she's like the fascia Mm -hmm. yeah so it's it's like well I don't know what's alive for you but I mean I could launch into some of what I brought up in our little text message conversation earlier today are we ready Should should I share um so it's a full moon I tend to be an insomniac um, during the full moon. And so I was up till 3.30 in the morning last night in full full, full moon uh, uh, stance. <laughs> and I was actually looking for a photo, a specific photo from 2018. And I have like gazillions of photos in my iCloud. And as I was looking through the photos, I couldn't help but see screenshots of text message conversations that I'd had with various relationships in my life. Um, Some were friendships, business relationships, some were clients, some were um, some were uh, dating partners or people I was considering dating, uh, things like that. And I was really um, struck by how. um, What's the word like bitchy? (laughs) like triggery I was and it was you know Jupiter and Scorpio it's all the muck is coming out the me too movement like dealing with sexuality I think those 2018 was a pretty rough year I think there was a big shift in the ground quaking your Uranus had just gone into Taurus so there's that which is a divine feminine there's a lot of stuff happening that I was feeling that other women were feeling the divine feminine was kind of like awakening from its slumber a little bit and starting to like get into position. And the men were like, whoa, 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 what's going on? And what's my new role in relationship? Mm-hmm. And I, in rereading my, some of my text messages, which by the way, I screenshot these because I'm studying um, female sexuality empowerment for my dissertation. And so this is all data. My own personal experiences are data. So I, I hang on to all this stuff along with photographs and and, and even like screenshots of memes that were alive in me at the time. And um, now ha- being more calm about this stuff and see- seeing some healing and some integration, not only in my own life and my own relationship life, but also the feminine and masculine collectively, I can look and be like, whoa, I was kind of harsh <laughs> some of the time. And though some of those dudes were straight up lying. Like I know now and look at straight up lying, straight up bad behavior. And I was, me- I was meeting it with harshness. And so my full moon reflection has been, do I continue to dish out this like hell no motherfucker energy when I can see it, which I could see it back then even. So I was like, nope, putting boundary, 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 putting a stop to that. Or do I enforce a boundary in a more kind and gentle and soft way because the first was me protecting myself. It was like, this is precious. You're not going to be doing anything to fuck this up. So you over there, I'm here, I'm not dealing with this. And if they came to me with good behavior, then I'm soft and open and whatnot. Now I'm wondering, even if they're coming at me with bad behavior, if I'm staying soft and open, and still setting that firm boundary, are they learning? Maybe they can learn. Maybe they're not being shamed. Maybe they're not being like, or do they need like a little, because I think sometimes I communicate in a masculine way. A lot of times I do. I communicate directly. Like I have a lot of brothers. It's just like, I know you know this too. It's just like a bro talking to a bro, but I don't look like a bro. I look like a woman. And so they don't hear it the same as they would, even if I say the exact same words, they won't hear it the same as if their bro said it. So, (laughs) so this has been kind of my full moon um, reflection. And I know if I'm contemplating this individually, then this is something also alive collectively, right? As we navigate through these times and this all relates to the body because it's about honoring. And so for me, it was protecting. And now, you know, I'm feeling a little bit more safe I would say in my body and I can kind of open up a little bit more and grow and expand and then so we're each doing that work individually on ourselves and then we're offering some healing 
to those we're in partnership with, whether that's a relationship, whether that's just for a moment, whether that's at the grocery store, <laughs> whether it's outside of a Planned Parenthood. I just had a run-in last week with a with a somebody holding a murder sign. That was interesting. Oh. Um, I'm trying to yeah, I'm trying to be. It was just you know such a cliche thing. That's why I sent that song by. Um, diggable planets where they wrote femme fetal is the name of the title and they talk about what's going on with these people with the murder signs in the in the conversation and i'm like man it's been so many years and this is still happening what's going on this is this is this harshness like calling somebody a murderer as they come out of the clinic for their annual exam and breast exam and all of this stuff is not the way it's not the way um, to create health and so I've been reflective of how I interact with folks to invite them into their hearts rather than just stopping and protecting myself. Right. And maybe like being like a little bit harsh in my, in my bite. Mm. Not never attacking, but just like not here, not, not going to happen here. So I'm just curious about that. I don't know if you have any thoughts. Wow. Well, I mean, I think that there are, these are all really good reflections. I think that boundaries are definitely, you know, as I think boundaries are necessary, right? Um, to honor yourself. Um, and if we express, if we're able to express from a place of love, that's received, it should be received. If mm -hmm. it's not received, that person's not for you. Mm -hmm. And you just like, so if that gives us great permission to be in the moment, right? Because if we are consistently doing our work and we're doing the movement work, we're making sure that our energy is moving through the body and the things that align with you and you know your optimal way of being, the way you eat, the way you live, act, and are every day, that's contributing to your overall health and alignment to really put out a, be a magnetic beam of energy so that you're also like attracting people but the way divine works sometimes sometimes you're like damn i'm doing the work how do i attract this motherfucker <laughs> right like how would you get in here i'm like i've been doing all this work around like protecting myself but sometimes divine is like showing you sometimes when we first start doing the work we we kind of like that person comes back and it's almost a test of like are you sure you don't want to just like try and I think that that's a reflection of there's like parts of us that are still attached and connected, you know, and we're doing that work. And so we are creating situations where, where we're attracting opportunities to heal that. Opportunities to heal and grow. I love what you said too about the, um, the beam and the, and the so far. <laughs> I love how you tried to like make yourself thinner as if that like as if you could disappear while you were walking through. <laughs> he has camouflage on, so right, I think yeah, he camouflage pants. Oh, you you messed up, Shofar. You need <laughs> you were so close. I was like, wow, try to all good. <laughs> your invisible powers were not working well it's you know what that's all right we needed some masculine energy on the show i was just thinking that like we're well into season two and it's been all ladies so far so you you could feel that <laughs> speaking of beaming in what what we need <laughs> he's like i'm here i'm really small but i'm here <laughs> go real fast oh too funny <laughs> Well, I mean, stay and hang out if you want, or go get a snack, whatever. <laughs> Carry on, whatever you're doing. Uh, did you all hear the doorbell just ring just now? Yes. That was Dijon. He just dropped some food off for us. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the, the gang's all here. Okay. Like, make it a party. <laughs> like, why not? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, goddess vibrations. All right. And I can't help but notice that show's book, Soul. S-O-L, Sacred Orgasmic Living, is right behind you. My eyes zeroed in on that as soon as uh, we went live, too. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. And the Osho book, of course, underneath. Yeah, it's like a full crew right here. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That's what's happening today. This is what the show is. <laughs> nice. We have a live studio audience. I love it. <laughs> that's so much more fun. 
after seeing the whole setup from another Hey, side. Dijon. <laughs> and D hey Dijon's been on um you weren't on this show Dijon but where were you you were on uh, bedtime meditations I think weren't you on one of those bedtime meditation carpools we talked about uh twin flames yeah so Dijon and I did a show together a, lo a long time ago it feels like a long time ago now well, this is actually kind of cool because that the, the two um, masculine beings showed up because it does fit what we're talking about. We're talking about masculine, feminine, this integration. Um, we're talking a little bit about just before you got here, uh, Dijon, like me too, in 2018, I was saying to Kirti that I found some of my text messages with some characters back in the day and I was pretty prickly with um, some of my boundaries as far as like, people, not people, men coming up to me and straight up lying to me or really showing up with bad behavior. And I, you know, and I'm wondering now in reflection, now that I've integrated more, can I be softer? Can I be gentler in my setting my boundaries and my corrections? Um, so as not, not to polarize or ostracize the masculine and actually invite him to grow and open his heart as I keep my heart open, right? So this is this integration that I'm feeling right now. And the title of our show tonight is uh, is uh, body rituals or bless re body blessing rituals to transform trauma into treasures. So it's about treating your body with exquisite reverence. And when we do that as women, as goddesses, and we are eating the right foods and we're moving our bodies and we are um, being very conscious and mindful with our energy. And we are treating ourselves so with its exquisite self care, then we just don't allow anyone to treat us with anything less than that. Because why would we? It would be a downgrade. It would be taking away, as Kirti said, some of our beam as our as our our beam is shining out. And so I put a lot of time and energy, and I know you do too, Kirti, with your movement practices, the way that you live your life to be this beam and a lot of it is for our families and it's for our communities and the work that we have show up and do in integrity but you know when we're choosing a partner it's so important to have that person that is going to expand that and not diminish that or not shut it down or not take it away and so this is a two-part thing it's like what are how do we as goddesses stop that negative self-talk how do we stop disrespecting our bodies by saying we're too fat, we're too thin, we're too old, we're too wrinkly, we're too whatever, we're not enough this, we're not enough that, we're not enough, breasts aren't big enough, like whatever it is, we're just talking about some of the physical, not even too masculine, too whatever. How do we stop that and love what is so that we can communicate that boundary to the men that are wanting to be in our lives or are choosing us? And we're saying, yes, and this is the this is my standard. This is how I expect to be treated because this is how I treat myself. Why is it so serious over there, you guys? What the heck? <laughs> you guys, you all are hungry, huh? <laughs> I, I love this conversation, Nasasha. And, and yeah. I've been having these conversations um, with lots of people recently, I feel like, because it, it is something we're collectively navigating. It's about like, how do we heal, right? Yeah. How do we heal? And one thing I find helpful in my shift to perspective and dealing with it is that um, there are these systems that exist that create certain outputs so like patriarchy is a system patriarchy is not a man mm -hmm. so a lot of times when we're talking about the patriarchy all this anger is directed towards men but men are are suffering inside of the system of the patriarchy in the same way that women are suffering they have a different role in playing out how that happens but the person who's perpetuating pain is in the most pain in the highest place of disconnection. Mm. So it's important to view the situation with compassion 
which is not a denial of taking responsibility or accountability, but there has to be an ability to sit on the same side of the table in the situation and say, this is what we're trying to heal from and we're in it together. For instance, in my personal life, my father was not a part of my life for a, a long time. I used to go over there during the summer. And when I started getting like erections and all that type of stuff, I'd ask him, you know, what, what's going on here? Like, what do I do about it? And he would laugh. And then he'd be like, I've got something for you. When we got home, he gave me some pornography to watch and told me to masturbate. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that and then Hollywood movies and television shows were my only interaction with like, how you interact with the opposite sex. That's all I knew. So, and that's a lot of people. So of course, I'm gonna have a, a toxic or a non-reverential attitude that's like disconnected from maybe what we all know to be true in the deepest part of ourselves, which is like this feminine, this sacred mother life force energy. And you wanna get it because you need it because you're traumatized, but you don't know how to get it. So mm -hmm. like how you're coming at it is the ways you've seen other people come at it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's unhealthy, but it's not, even, it's not even an accident. Like I feel like there's intentionality in keeping us disconnected from the true power of what sexuality is when it's done in a sacred way. Yeah, such valid points and um... It's interesting to hear your words as I'm reflecting on all of my screenshotted text messages that I reviewed last night um, during my own full moon ritual and all these conversations that I was having. And when you say things like compassion, <clears throat> you know, the, the first part is like, gosh, somebody's straight up lying to me, like intentionally and trying to hurt me my first response is this knee jerk, like keeping myself safe. And I also hear what you say about compassion. And so then it, it reminds me it's all waves, right? It's like the first wave is safety. Now the second wave is like, okay, now that you're safe and you can regulate your nervous system, can you see the other person's nervous system? And can you see what's going on for them? And that's another wave. And then maybe the third wave is sort of this integration where it's like, okay, like uh, literally us right now in this space, you guys rolled in <laughs> and now we're like integrating, right? These feminine and masculine um, viewpoints and, and, and principles. And like, how can we get more curious about these things that we've all been through and, and, and we have different experiences yet, like you're saying, the pain is the same. It's a disconnection from the feminine. We're disconnected from our own feminine when we're having to be the masculine protecting ourselves and being rah, 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 rah. like that should be the, the, you know, Golden's on here. She says, bless, yes, hi sisters. Golden mentioned in one of our episodes a couple of weeks ago that, you know, she she was imagining this this village where the men are kind of the protectors around the perimeter and the and the women are just there to like create and 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 nurture and whatever else. But when we don't have those um, societies that are in balance, like you're saying, because of patriarchy, then we each have to try to be that that feminine and masculine bounce back and forth and wear all the hats. Right. And so we're we're getting pulled out of maybe some of this natural flow of energy. And I'll also say that when I say another wave, I think of your song um, that's on your album, Dijon's Dimension. So anybody watching, it's a really, really, really cool album. So go check out some of Dijon's music. It's on Spotify, Amazon, but also Bandcamp. Yeah, you can they can purchase it on Bandcamp. So impressed by Natasha right now. I know. <laughs> no, I love that. I honestly, truly, I love. I told you from the moment I heard your album, I thought it was fantastic, and it and it totally. Um, it's all about the twin flame experience, which is really you know an inner unity of your inner masculine, feminine, and and your connection to source. Um, even though we like to make it about a person, all the time, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it's an incredible album. So I, I think of you know again, another wave. So what is this next wave of healing? What is this next wave of integration in ourselves, in our communities, you know, with the masculine and the feminine? 
And then how do we upkeep that? And so being that we're talking about the body for me, especially, you know, being trained in just about every trauma modality there is and being a psychotherapist and 20 years of working with trauma, it's like regulating the nervous system is like teaching people to regulate the nervous system, especially with psychoneuroimmunology and mind body medicine. Shafar is co-facilitating my inclusion group with me now. We just finished that tonight a session and it's all about self-regulation and we start with regulating our own nervous systems so that we can hear truly hear another person where we couldn't before mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what culture you are in mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what your circumstance you grew up with the body still feels fight or flight the same it does the same thing in the body right so we've all experienced it to various levels, to various toxic loads, of course. But we can't really heal collectively until we manage ourselves. So it's like starting, starting with the body. And there's some people that wanna leave the body and they wanna focus all about the spiritual. Oh, the vibration's off or you jumped out of the vortex or now, no, oh, that's just, you attracted that because now you're in this vortex or, you know, I, it's like, right. <laughs> I was listening to Abraham Hicks this morning. I think I was looking for something on YouTube and an Abraham Hicks video popped up and I was like, sure. Yeah. Like let's, I haven't listened in a while. Let's, it's only 10 minutes. Let's, let's give it a listen. It'll be a good morning meditation practice. And it was talking about how a woman had asked, how do I, end my, or how do I know if it's time to end my relationship? And they said, well, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to end it. You just vibrate into what you want to experience. And it sounds so like, like, what does that even mean? But then they gave the example, your children do it all the time. They ignore you. You tell them to do something. They don't want to do that thing. They just ignore you. They go deaf and they do what they want to do. And so it's like if you're not and it, and it goes again with talking to to men that are straight up coming at you with bad behavior or lies you know mama gina says the most powerful thing you can do as a woman is remove your attention from a man that's the most powerful thing you can do this most powerful way to correct behavior rather than barking at them and screaming at them is just remove attention and so same with kids right and um they're removing their attention <laughs> from their parents and living their best life, <laughs> whether that's Legos or whatever they want to be focusing on. And then pretty soon that relationship, it transforms, right? It shifts, it, it vibrates out. I mean, that's what happened to me. I, I learned how to facilitate these groups and my heart softened and opened so much that I could no longer stay with a narcissist. It just, the, 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 the gap of our comfort levels of intimacy was way too wide. I could tolerate it as a traumatized human. I could tolerate the lack of intimacy that comes with a narcissistic person. But after that, I couldn't, it was too painful to exist in that relationship. And it was a slow untangling mm -hmm. until it went away. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's not, I'm still co-parenting, <laughs> but all of what they were saying, Abraham was really Bowen family systems theory too, which is a theory of energy, which is basically traditional Chinese medicine. All of these things are super connected. It's basically the same, it's energy, it's energetic principles, but it's called something else, depending on who named it and claimed it and said, this is my territory, <laughs> but it's the same energetic land. And so getting too caught up in the in spirit, you know, we have to remember that we're having a physical experience. We're here in these bodies. We're meant to taste and touch and feel pleasure and all of the senses and hear. And I mean, right here in, in this room, y'all are a bunch of amazing creators, creative beings. And in order to be a creator, you have to be a sensual person. You have to enjoy and indulge the senses, right? Mm. so and this is what i love so much about our tribe is everyone everyone that's part of it is some form of creator which is that sensual energy and speaking of that steffi is on she said all my loves in one live stream with a big <laughs> kiss speaking of creators the gang's all back together it must be like a birthday week or something people are like 
like, hey, where's, where's my people? <laughs> uh, and she says, I wonder what good can come out of us being masculine and feminine at the same time. Could it be a positive progression? Well, I have a question because what, what you were talking about when they came in, they might actually, it might be interesting to hear their perspective. Yeah, I would love that. Remind me of what what I what I exactly was talking about because I don't now I don't know what part I said before they got there and when they got there um so it was about boundaries and um you know wanting to set boundaries with men you know physical boundaries with men because you honor your body and you take care of your body so deeply and <clears throat> you have such a standard, like you have high standards. So when a man comes at you and not understanding that standard, how do you set a boundary that is soft and loving and not prickly? Like what you're seeing in when you were going through and seeing your text messages from the past that it's like, wow, I've been really, and what we would, you know, and the tantric world would call that, you know, the, the wounded masculine or toxic masculine of just like, having to like shit on somebody to push them away right like there's such armor there but mm -hmm. it's from it's from repeated protection mm -hmm. but it's repeated protection because there's just been no healing and it's just like so now that you're going back and seeing that past part you're you're a different person now mm -hmm. and so you're able to see it with the different lens and now you have this new interest in this full moon light energy of who here I am exploring relationship again. I'm ready to release this, um, this sharp edge to me that I can now see from a, a, a reflective point of view that it was, it was harsh, but you understand where it's coming from. So I feel like the question is, you know, how can a woman set boundaries and not come off prickly? Well, I will um, <clears throat> say just a little something to clarify that, and then I would open it up to Dijon and Shafar for your um, maybe experiences or desires <laughs> in that question, how you would like that to be answered. But um, I, I was never mean to anyone. It's not really in my nature to, I mean, I can have a sharp tongue for sure, but it doesn't come unprovoked. It's like, once it's provoked, it's pretty fucking sharp, but I'm not going to just come at somebody. So, um, it, I never said anything mean. I think there was a way that I spoke the truth, which looking back now, I see, damn, I, that was the truth. That was my intuition was right on. Um, and there's a way that I could have said it without, um, kind of like you, 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 mm -hmm. or, or, well, this is how it is kind of thing, or I, 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 and it's more about defensiveness. So that's the thing mm -hmm. that I would like to Soften. evolve. And that is my next growth in relationship is letting go of that defensiveness. And if you're familiar with John Gottman's work, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, he, there's four things that he can predict, he can watch couples, married couples, and, and within like seven minutes can predict their rate of divorce mm -hmm. and it's whether or not they have one of these four horsemen. So one is defensiveness, one is contempt, one is, um, uh, gosh, now I don't even know the other, the other two, but they'll, they'll come up. They're, they're pretty gnarly. But defensiveness, I think, is natural to anyone who's been hurt. Yeah, because you have something to defend. Yeah, you have something to defend. So there's the past hurt, the traumas, and even the stuff like Dijon is talking about being hurt from the patriarchy. That's a hurt. And then, you know, the different hurts that from the different players and roles of, of their roles, mother, father, sister, brother, boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever, aunt, uncle. And, and then there's the, um, then there's the hurt that's created within the current relationship because you're unconsciously playing out your dynamics and your dynamics are just like, you're like throwing <laughs> your dynamics at each other and creating this big mess. And now you're feeling defensive because you're just like, I need safety. I need to make it stop. You know, you don't stop doing this to me kind of thing. And so I, I saw that a lot. And I, and so in looking at my 2018 self, I'm gonna send her lots of love and be like, damn girl, like you are really going through it. And for, like you said, good reason, because that was such a healing phase. And what happened after that year 
is I really went inward and did not date for the most part for almost two years. I mean, there were people that would kind of like flow through and I'd be like, mm, no, just because I was, I was, I felt so prickly and I was like, I don't, I need to work this out. Um, and that was part of the healing. It was like going in there, the laboratory and doing the, all the like shit flying around and then being like, whoa, okay, rest and retreat, put band-aids and, you know, fix my wounds. And I stayed there in a long time. And then it's like, okay, dipping my toe in now ever so slightly back out in the world. And I feel, I feel healed, although I know there's still um, places to go. And I, and I laugh because when we went to Tulum last year. I remember saying to y'all, like, I feel the healthiest I've ever been. And I feel like there's nothing really left to, for me to work on. I mean, there always is, but right now I'm in a, such a good pl plateau place. I like, I want to enjoy this. And I was the first one crying within 24 hours when we got to Tulum triggered as fuck. Like, I was like, okay, all right. And what ended up happening after that is my heart just opened more and more, but it's because of the safety also that was created within our group. So it's always safety first. But back to your question, Kirti, that I want to open up to the gentleman is how would, yeah, well, it's a two-part question. Okay. <laughs> you, okay. Cause there's two scenarios. How would you like the feminine to respond to you without being prickly? But there's two scenarios. One is you're full on lying to her and you know, you're lying to her and you know, you're playing a rule. You're doing the thing out of the patriarchal playbook that all the dudes taught you to do. And you're going to do this. And I'm not going to say this is either one of you, but I know oh. both of you are guilty at some point in your life <laughs> of doing some of this stuff. Just like we're guilty of all of our, you know, feminine manipulations or whatever I've that you've done anything. You've never, ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so she catches you. She's on to you. She can smell. And she's like, rah, 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 rah. how would you rather have her approach you if you're doing that? And the second part of the question is your intentions are good but there's some unconscious subconscious stuff coming up that you're not aware of that you're pushing a boundary or you're encroaching or she's like sees it feels it but maybe you don't yet and she's wanting to correct that is that clear like the two different scenarios mm -hmm. yeah. because i'm i want to i want to offer this out to the goddesses out there so that they maybe can start to change their behavior a little bit, but also, you know, the men, because I really want there to be healing spaces for men. I think there's not enough. I, I know that y'all are creating healing spaces for men. My friend, Mike Watts just started a podcast today. Oh, now I forgot the name of it, but that's Dr. Christian Northrup's son-in-law. And he's just started a, a podcast, um, for men, he's a, to, there's so much stigma around being man and male. And he's like, we don't have the first clue what to do <laughs> and how to fix the, how to fix ourselves or whatever. So I guess that's what the podcast is going to be about. So this stuff is, is coming up, but curious to know um, what, what's coming up for you and what you have to share. Well, first thing I'll say uh, to you all is um, trust your prickliness. You know, <laughs> there you go yeah, yeah. because um it comes from a divine place too mm -hmm. you know and um you know porcupines hedgehogs they're all they're all divine little beings <laughs> 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 you know and they, they they have those 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 quills for a reason um mm -hmm. your, your white blood cells we want them to be prickly we want them to be defensive you know so what i'm getting what i'm getting at is now it can become too wrapped up and now you have inflammation. Now you have a, a disease that is attacking, you know, autoimmune thing going on. So it can become turned up too much, but don't, you don't want to turn it down so much. Don't, don't, don't demonize it. Don't like, Oh, why am I so prickly with men? Like f find out where you are on the scale, be very real, take real assessments and inventory about where you are on that scale. And just keep playing with yourself. You're just fine tuning yourself. It's just a beautiful instrument, fine tuning that. But you don't want to quell it all together either. Oh um, right. 
Yeah. I would rather be prickly, and I'll say this because I have a daughter. I would much rather her be a bitch and be prickly than be a doormat and and mm -hmm. have somebody rolling right over her. So absolutely, thank you for. I just want to take note that Shofar just said, "Keep playing with yourself." <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, everybody has part of the That was a part of, part of the advice. <laughs> there's a new there's a new masculine in town. <laughs> He's not going to give you the Playboy magazine, but he is going to tell you to keep playing with yourself. That's his tagline. Keep playing with yourself. Oh boy, this show is going to get rowdy, isn't it? There's just, <laughs> I can I feel it. All right, full moon. Yeah, uh-huh. Keep playing okay. with yourself. Yeah, for sure. Keep keep playing with yourself. Keep uh, the lightheartedness and, and, you know, seeing where it's showing up. And if it is tuned up too much and you, and you know, we know that if we're we're getting to the map, the place where every time a guy is in our life is becoming fucking toxic, <laughs> then you got an autoimmune you got an autoimmune disease now in your relationships. <laughs> right. It's too it's turned up too much. Yeah. And so we start to look at that and everything. On the, the flip side, there's a grace and ease. Like if you look at a cell, we want it to be semi permeable. The cell doesn't want to let everything in, mm -hmm. but it doesn't want to be closed off either uh, to everything. So it's like just finding that grace and ease. And um, and last thing I'll, I'll say, and I definitely want to hear from you, Dijon, is like, um, I know when I when I called in you, Kirti, is because I did a lot of work on my feminine. Around the time, like in 2014, you know, I was in a real good place with the feminine as far as starting out doing the energy work. And, you know, creation gave me grace with that for the first few years. And then in 2017, I started having all this shit going on with my mom and my sisters and women I was dating. I'm like, what the f I thought I was in a good place with the feminine. Like, <laughs> it's, it's not looking so good right now. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of work on my feminine just a couple of months before I met Kirti. So what I'm getting at is working on our own masculine, you know, if the, if, if, cause you're the goddess. So we're just reflections of what you got going on in your inner world. Mm -hmm. We are the creators. You are. Well, and that sort of makes sense astrologically too. 2017, I had magical, beautiful relationships. So yeah, like you were saying this, like I, I divorced in the end of 2014, we separated. And then up until about the beginning or the end of mid 2017 is when all of a sudden now I start meeting like my tests. <laughs> wow. But before that, I had these beautiful, beautiful, like soulmate relationships. It's like every person that I dated wanted to marry me, but I was like, I'm not ready yet. I'm just coming out of divorce with such a special partnership. And I still, they're still my dear friends today. And we still, you know, keep in touch in some way or another Instagram message once a year or something like that. But it yeah all the tests came in in 2017 2018 and i'm like whoa so i think there was some astrological stuff too and especially because i know you and i were born 10 days apart so i'm sure we have some similar stuff in our charts as well as the collective astrological themes yeah it makes sense but but for me it was um i felt like back then you're saying you're working on your feminine i felt like I was working on my masculine because I had so many partners not showing up for me and not being consistent and not choosing me and just not being masculine. So I'm like, where am I not choosing myself? Where am I not showing up for myself? Where am I saying I'm going to do something and I don't get it done? You know? And so that's been an ongoing integration for several years now. Dijon, what's yeah. coming up? Well, first of all, I was curious if you could send me the link to that Patreon tier of yours, that's one Instagram message a year. <laughs> and what's the cost of that Patreon tier? <laughs> okay, the sp spoken like the true masculine energy. <laughs> How do we monetize? Like th my energy is precious. <laughs> Give me the dollar dollars. But you know what? That's a joke. But seriously, that was part of my process. I had I realized at a certain point, especially after talking to a male friend who's also a coach and does men's work, like how much energy I was leaking just by responding to text messages or bids for my attention and things like that. And then when I cut it off and then even now I get random people on my Instagram page, I basically, if I respond at all, I'll say, this is a business page. Please don't distract me from making income. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love so, it. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I think that, 
I agree with what Shofar is saying and that like all spectrums of response I think are appropriate at, at certain times. Mm -hmm. So we're feeling into how to stay centered, but also like communicate your truth. That sounded like an excellent expression of it. You know, I was like very clear, <laughs> like don't fuck around, but like in, a, <coughs> in an eloquent way. So I'll just tell you something that specifically helps me in situations I've specifically been in. And that's just like, one, um, calling me brother, <laughs> like to just re remind you, you know, mm -hmm. because it's like, I think that's the foundation. It should be the foundation of every relationship. It's like brother, sister first. Mm -hmm. And then once you have safety, then there's other things you can potentially explore. But I know growing up, it was like, there's all this idea, of there's something outside of you that the feminine has that you want to get, right? So if you're coming out of a relationship thinking about something you can get, it's inherently going to be fucked up, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about it, about what you can give, and it's like, oh, this is my sister, like, what can I give? And I just find that the relationships I begin in that mindset are just much healthier and the energy flows better. I think about like, who is this person? What are they trying to get in their life? Mm. What do they need? And how can I supply that without needing anything? Just like offering support when I'm resourced enough to do that. Mm -hmm. And not trying to get something. And then, you know, you'd be surprised at how things evolve coming that way as opposed to like the pursuing and like all this type of stuff. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's super fun to like play with polarity and all of that stuff. And I so appreciate chivalry and all of that, too. So it's like, like let's not get rid of that. I, I like that when it's healthy. And I hear what you're saying, where it's like, it's almost like start with friendship, you know, start with safety, start with like, calling me brother, we're family here, we're, we're all on the same page, like, can we establish that, that we have this mutual respect for each other? And then um, where does it go from there? And I also would say even, I wouldn't even take it a step further, another wave of, of like, what can you get? What can you give? But also what I like to say is what can we create? Mm -hmm. And so, because I know a lot in our society, women are socialized to be givers and, and it's normalized that they would give so much energy and so much of their vital energy and not be paid for it. You know, Warren Buffett says America was built on the backs of women and slaves unpaid labor. That was, that was what was creating these households, right? And, and men are socialized to go get it, like, go conquer the world, go, what can you get? What can you, you know, what can you bring in? Again, it might be for your family or whatever. And so sometimes women have to focus on um, getting and receiving instead of giving so much. And men need to focus more on giving instead of getting just so that we can balance the scales. But if we say, what can we create? Then we're more flexible in our roles of what we're integrating together, right? And I'm, I'm really at this, um, been contemplative about this as well too, as far as I've been contemplative about this for a very long time, but um, especially after coming out of divorce, I'm very clear I don't want to be in a traditional marriage again. Um, that didn't work for me, the way that marriage paints is painted in this society. Um, and I, but I value partnership and connection and I have no problem being faithful and loyal and committing and all of that. Um, I enjoy that in fact, because then I know we can go deeper and create more because there's that safety, right? And I, know that I don't want to go into that level of commitment unless it's a certain kind of person and that there's aligned values of, I like the saying of, you know, someone who feels like home, but also an adventure because it allows you that safety as well as that freedom. And so I think there's so many people out there creating relationships based on this model of, well, you do this and I do this and then you're supposed to do this and you do this for me and I do this for you and then you take care of me and I'll take care of you. And it just is not, it's not really a good setup. It doesn't, 
it doesn't really work that well. And especially if you're on dating apps, which is like DoorDash for <laughs> dating, right? It's like so awful. It's so hard. It's so hard. But I mean, not, that being said, I've met wonderful, beautiful people on dating apps. But when you're in that modality and you forget of the setup and how that's set up, you're like, oh, this person looks great. Oh, they fit. Oh, look at what they have in their profile. They fit exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, I think they could fit into my life. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, you have everything I need. And then to get even more like toxic with it is when you start trying to change somebody, right? Because it's like, oh, you have like seven eighths of what I need. But if you could just change this eighth, this other eighth, then you'd be perfect for me. And, mm -hmm. and we forget that when two people come together, like every relationship's different and we create something new and unique. And so are we open to the creation of what could be? And we have no idea what's going to be created, but there's going to be some kind of recipe where you're going to throw a little this, I'm going to throw a little this. And what I thought was we were going to make is actually going to be something totally different, but usually it's a lot better than I would have even my little mind could have created. Right. And so for me, like, it's less about what do I want? Of course I want partnership. Of course I want community. Everybody wants the sense of family. Right. But it's like, who, do I want that with what kind of value system and that that sort of thing so I I like that idea of what can we create I wanted to say that 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 concept of I think what we can create um it's a beautiful one I think that that's where everything has to come out of I think as a society it starts with like we just don't actually support feminine energetic practices and even just substitute feminine with intuitive feminine with you know um nature aligned feminine with creative feminine with passionate feminine with sensual that's what that means um um, it's unfortunate that we align that to only meaning a woman but just that energy of passion we don't really support those fields of study it's a part of the system i think to probably not and so, of course, that's going to be, you know, if we're not supporting that as a society, there, there's going to be that interesting juxtaposition within dating as well, right? Because if we're trying to be like successful in society and do it by society's rules, but then love is kind of like, it's, it, it doesn't follow the rules. So there's always going to be that. Um, so I think that we, we, we create it for a reason. I think we've probably not supported the feminine skill set and the feminine healing world as artists or supporting the arts and supporting forward thinking the way it should be, you know, meaning like we would be airing all types of hip hop on the radio at all times. Mm -hmm. We would be not just exposed to one type of porn, maybe like an array of expressions of sensuality. Um, and we wouldn't just be sold one type of successful you know, whatever, like you were talking about marriage. Um, so I think it, it starts there. It's like that, that society is kind of built on denying that part. And so we, if what we're doing right now is refueling the feminine and it's, it's like, what can we create to refuel the feminine energy on the planet? What is required is to drop into the open Shakti energy within all of us, which is the energy of passion and really feeling like to what expanse can you feel your own edge of your own passion? You know, like how much do you want to feel? Like how wide can you be for somebody's, for your own, <laughs> for the planet's Shiva to like be able to be erect, to be able to produce purposeful action? <laughs> you know, so you have like passion and purpose, purposeful action, and that's happening in all of us. But if we're living in a society where, where passion is constantly feeling like it needs to be muted or it can't be, you know, like things that that's not being able to be accessed, it's, um, yeah, that's going to throw off the, the purposeful execution. They're, they're, they, 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 are, they are one and the same. So I think that right now, you know, we feel that pendulum and uh, we, we talk about it, the difference between feminist and feminine, right? 
-hmm. One is based in a social socio-political climate and the other is based in a highly energetic realm of like quantum physics of equal and opposite energies and everything's based on circuitry and waves. <laughs> waves. It's the waves. It's all about the waves. Yeah, and and um, so, yeah, I think it has to come to what can we create? And in order to get to a space of what can we create between a man and a woman, whether they're in the courting stage of relating, whether they've been married for 10 years or whether they've been married for 20 plus years, what can we create has to be met amidst the journey of what are you willing to release? Mm -hmm. And what are the stories that aren't really serving? Because see, this is the thing, you even asking the question of, you know, wow, how can I play around and get my toe wet and do this now? You are not the same woman you were then. Mm -hmm. You see, you're just dropping into a feeling of prickly. Mm -hmm. But what you can do now is take that feeling of prickly and like what Sho said, like trust the feeling of prickly, like discern, like where was the wisdom there? But you are no longer that person. You can now actually access a more Shakti passionate space of like, well, I'm doing the work. Like, whoever walks into my life, if they're not aligned with me, it's going to be so clear that like, I actually don't need to like what you're, what Mama Gina said, there's no barking necessary. Like I just shift my being mm -hmm. and they just fall away. Mm -hmm. But you have to come from that space of what can we create? And um, if, if you're talking to a part, a potential partner and you're feeling that tension of, should I be putting up my boundaries right now? There's great little tester tools to see if you're, if, if you're talking to somebody that's obsessed with your physical, if you're talking, and, and the truth is you're probably beaming in that person as a lesson. So first and foremost, give thanks for this reflection that's in front of you, because it's like, okay, I just had an interaction yesterday, you know, in dance class, this person that be like, totally was hollering at me back in the day, and then to just like cross paths with them again, and then, you know, not under, like, just just being caught out of the blue and this whole nice girl fucking shit of like, oh, can I have your number and not knowing how to respond of like, no, you can't have my number. Like, I don't even fucking know what you're doing with yourself right now. Like, I, I'm not saying yes to like, it was, I didn't say any of that. I was like, um, yeah, sure. Like, here's my, like, yeah, of course. Like just not wanting to be rude. You get what I'm saying? Like, and that for me was a beautiful reflection on like, yo, like, I've done the work, but that was a reminder that like in those moments, I can pause, take a breath. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of realized it in the midst. And he's like, oh, I still have your number and this, that, and the other. And I tried, you know, I tried my best to be polite and from a place of openness because my strategy is I can't help it. My heart's going to bust wide open every single time I'm, I'm in love and I'm just going to accept it. Well bragged. That, that is you. You are I'm the full card. Yeah. Like I say, I'm the full card. If you move me, you move me. And like, you, it's going to be really hard to lose me because I, <laughs> thank you. I, you know what I'm saying? So I think that, that, that what, and then what ended up happening was like me saying a line, what I ended up saying was like, look, it's not going to be a yes. Every time. Don't expect a yes from me. Every time you reach out to me, I don't dance the way I used to. And I don't gig the way. I used to, I'm a different person now, you know, and then it followed up with texts about inviting me out for drinks. And then it was just like, so well, I'm really flattered. I don't drink these days like that. I def I'm having, I'm drinking my wine right now, you know? <laughs> but I'm not going to Baja Betty's. Do you know right. What I mean? Right. Oh yeah. I mean, for me, that's a big uh, boundary. So know? now, but you know, for me, that was like, I feel like I'm interacting with this. He's not a potential. But I'm not interested in I'm not interested in making him feel like shit either. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it's from the place of what can we create? And the truth is we are co-creatives in the same area and we're gonna bump in and cross paths. Mm -hmm. And so this is the place where it's like that is the Shakti energy. That is the what can we from the Shakti space of like, okay, what can we create? So what you get, what what is a good strategy in this position is like, what is actually alive in this connection? Instead of focusing on like, you're a little creepy. Mm -hmm. I'm not really liking like, you know, and then like somebody was telling me like the way he was looking at my body of another friend was telling me they felt uncomfortable. And it's like, it's just lots of, who knows what anybody's thinking. Everybody's got stories going on. But at the end of the day, it's kind of just like, yeah, 
you have to be uh, clear and from this open space of what's working. Well, we're both, we're both creatives. We're both going to cross paths. I'm just going to let you know who I am. I'm going to share from a place of, a, of love for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be swayed into meeting you at Baja Betty's mm-hmm. to connect over drinks so that I then have to manage this awkward feeling and I'm under the influence. Like, I just don't do that anymore because I've released that many moons <laughs> in a row and um so you can offer what is alive you just when when partners ask you for things that make you feel uncomfortable you you instead of taking it as rejection like oh shit this guy wants to drink with me and then he's going to get me drunk and then he's going to take advantage of me it's redirection see what Shakti does is says, sees it as a oh creative potential plant that seed let me see what I can do with it mm-hmm. Let me see what I can grow with this interesting combination you're bringing my way. Cause it's like, Hmm. Yeah. You want to, okay. He's using, maybe he's, maybe he's using the guise of booking me for gigs. I don't know. Cause I've been down that path before too. So divine, divine might be giving me a test right now. Right. Like, does he really want to like, do we, are we really co-creators or is this going to be just like come to the studio type of thing. Right. Um, However, if I keep doing my work, I can trust myself moment to moment Mm -hmm. and always come from the space of what can we create? Even when you're feeling very unsafe, you can come to an ultimate space of safety within your own energetic presence to like, sometimes you realize you already have been doing that. I know each of us can think back at a time where we have felt under threat and we're like, damn, I'm so lucky I was saved. Well, really what's going on is that I think what's going on is like, that is our own, our natural awareness that like, when we're coming from a space of love and work, we can trust that divine is going to take care. And no matter whatever situation that's going to come our way, is going to have a lesson for us and we will be able to navigate and we will push through whatever it is. And you can trust that. Just trust that. You are not the same woman that you were then. You're going to get, you're going to get, and you're going to get some of those same punk ass busters. They're still going to come at you that way. Fake ass busters, fabulous potentials. And you get to come from a space of love and see what works in their approach. Mm -hmm. And you compliment them on what works. And then you just tell them where you're at, where it's what's not in alignment with what they're asking for. No, actually not so much. Those, that caliber of men that was coming at me at that point they don't seem anywhere really oh that's great different. good that's yeah, a good point. it Yay. comes out in, in more subtle you know it's like kind of similar behaviors and much much more toned down muted subtle ways but it's kind of coming from the same spots well and so- i also i wanted to say this for people out there who are listening to this episode and they're like well what if i'm not feeling like there's nothing i'm not like there's no attraction happening like that's also another common thing right that 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 both you know, um, that individuals feel like, well, I'm not getting really any action. Like I'm putting my, be- the, the, well, the truth is like, it, it's because you're, 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 you're managing the energy. Mm-hmm. You're managing the energy. You're in the training fields of the energy. You're creating the momentum of movement. Mm-hmm. So anytime you're releasing an old way of being, it's like you're introducing a new language of, of wave energy to your whole biomagnetic field so you got to give yourself some time but what often happens is we can't we're not even patient enough with ourselves we can't let the fucking cake just bake in the oven yeah you know what i'm saying we're kind of open it. is it done yet is it done yet is it done yet you know can i stick my dick in it yet can i stick my dick in it? <laughs> it's like fucking a dude do the titty vagina check first <laughs> Yeah. Check it. Is my how are my fluids? <laughs> you know, is, is this idea of just like the fast food attitude? Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. But the truth is that we we're all doing it, right? Well, because it's we're all, all doing it. It also is tied into this idea of what marriage should be, right? And what your role you're supposed to play. It's also tied into this like porn that you're talking about, which is like you know that get right to the action. It's all so related and the phrase that is um coming up for me as i'm listening to you uh, that's been coming up is one one that you say all the time which is open heart doesn't mean open legs and i'm thinking about it in a new context i'm not thinking about it sexually but i'm thinking about it as like a new friend comes into your life or a new potential dating partner and they want to go to baja betty's and get trashed and you're like that's not i don't do why would i like that I have work to do for this week and I'm growing a business and I'm changing the world and I don't want to be hung over for a day or two days. Like that's so not, I'm not opening my legs to that. 
like that's not I'm not the one you know or even like you meet somebody sometimes and they feel a connection with you and you you may or may not maybe you're neutral maybe that you're like oh there's a nice enough person they're like I'd like to get to know you better you know let's hang out and I'm thinking to myself like I don't have time to hang out I've got a huge list of desires that I have for this lifetime and I have a bunch of responsibilities on my plate too and I love what I've created in my life so I don't really hang out like to get to know if I'm going to feel something but if we have something that works for both of us you know like it's dinner time we both need to go get food let's go grab some food well and I think the important piece in that is that for each of us whether you're a man a woman or something that is a beautiful unique divine intervention integration of the two is that the feminine energy is always choosing so the feminine has to be very clear and someone in dance class on Sunday said the triple f feed the feminine first I think that as, as individuals on the planet, you know, that needs to be an affirmation that we're walking with and working from, because not only is it important for, you know, in order for the boundaries and maybe one way that this could like wrap into the body blessing, I was just like, oh my God, it's 9-11 already. I know it's crazy. One way that this could like wrap into the body blessing piece and like golden was on here. So that was really cool. And what we're really working to create, you know, this Chad, Preet, Steffi, they're all here. They're oh, all here. yay. I didn't want to interrupt, but <laughs> saying peace. Well, I think Preet is saying we can never give enough, but not to the wrong person. And she said what we can create, thumbs up. Yes. She's commenting on the contrast between femme and feminist and how it did quite a number. Feminism did quite a number on the feminine. Golden is saying being in the feminine is a rare luxury for so many of us nowadays, especially we talked about this single mom. Golden's going to be on a future episode, by the way. Um, Yay. Look in October, looking forward to that. Yeah. So, the well, what I was going to say is that uh, as a, is to think about, you know, in, in the tantric sense, we can think about our body as, you know, if our mothers are eating from the earth, right? And that's how our bones and tissue and bloods and cells created like we know this, everybody who's listened to this episode with you and me, this is like my thing I always will go to about understanding that we are earth, because it's really, really fundamental. And if we are earth, then we actually have to think of ourselves. if this is earth, and the organs and my blood and my cells are representing the networks in which things thrive on earth, then what, what are the qualities of the tourists that I want to inhabit my earth? What are the qualities of the visitors? What would I need on, to see on their passports before I give them entrance to enjoy these fruits and to enjoy all my magical abundance? I'm like the fucking island on Lost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like I make shit happen. I make shit grow. And I know that about me and the people who are around me know that about me too. And so it's like, if once you're, when you're creating boundaries that are from a place of love, if you don't want to be prickly, you've got to understand where you are being prickly with yourself in terms of like, okay, well, what do you desire? Are you really, how are you, how are you activating that in your life? If you want a partner <laughs> that shows up for you and maybe uses acts of service, right? Or is like words of affirmation and, and is like beautifying your body. And that's what you want. And divine sends you somebody and it's like, all of a sudden it's this different perspective of your body. And you're just like, oh my God, like, yeah, I wanted that, but that was like, ee, that was too much. And that was wrong and rough. Well, we could say like, oh, what's wrong with me? Like, why did I attract that in? But the truth is, is like, no, you're attracting that in because you need to be more clear with your desires. You got to be more clear with your desires. So getting clear with like, okay, if I, if I want to like attract the partner, then getting into the space of, hmm, well, where is, where, if I'm serving my body, I'm serving my body. How is my purpose serving my passion in my body? So you could go get a massage, but if that massage is not involving that you are getting to a space where like you're getting into a safety of your body and you're doing some processing and healing. So I would say if that massage is not including like breath work, sounding, processing, well, it's going to be different. And so that's why I say like you could drink 
kale smoothies, you can go work out. But if you're not really doing that body work of like the Shakti of creating the open space, no matter what beam you put out, divine is going to give you all of that. But knowing the open space and understanding the focused energy, you get really clear with who you're inviting onto your island, your exotic island, mm -hmm. your exotic island. For me, own purposeful passports only. I have enough passion to feel the planet and then some. Mm -hmm. So now I'm ready for all types of connections that bring me aligned purpose with what I'm here to do. I don't know if that's going to include dick and pussy, pussy and pussy, <laughs> dick, dick, pussy, pussy, dick, pussy. I don't give a fuck. That's like stupid shit. Yeah. That's like, that's that physical pleasure. That's fun. But like so much bigger than that. Oh, so much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we come from that space and then when you're telling a brother or a sister what you're trying to create and what you're inviting in your, their life and you look to them with that energy, they're like, I bow to you, Ashe. And they just move. They're like, you're you. And see, and that's what's funny because people are like, man, nobody talks to me. And a lot of times women who are super powerful, they, they build these comp. It's like, yo, because you're powerful. There might not be a lot around you right now. You're in the training grounds. You're in the place of manifesting your power, creating sexuality for yourself, your unique code, like patience. It's not about that. Gen the genital stuff is so like fluff, really fluff. We've just, as adults, as adults, we've forgotten how to access that place that we know so well as children. And so what we do is we just make it about the genitals. We just want to access that space. But the truth is we can access that space in so many levels. So what can we create has to come from this expansive space of invitation and allowing all types of beings to enter my space of creation. I am not afraid because my energy is light. I am protected by my trust within the divine. Nothing fucking phases me. Whatever you bring to me, I transmute. Because that's, that's just how I roll. That's every day of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm training myself in every moment. I always notice, like, I'll look at the negative. And I'm like, damn, what about the flip side of that? You know? <laughs> what about the flip side of that? Mm -hmm. Example, you know, people, if you're leading something and people aren't speaking immediately as a facilitator, you'd be like, oh, shit, fuck. And, uh, or it could be like, shit, maybe people are speechless. Maybe they're processing, maybe they're in space. Mm -hmm. If the ego wants to rush, the, the masculine, when it's not taken care of and it doesn't feel safe, it's going to rush to conclusions. So well, we want to, again, expand. To expand. Yeah, just Eve, do, do this with your arms. Just fucking do this more. Mm -hmm. Expand, be a bird. Fucking spread your wings, <laughs> expand. Explore your space, imprint your space expand just keep expanding keep expanding well, and get comfortable with doing that you know uh, something i see a lot with the feminine is women complaining about the quality of men showing up or complaining about men not being there and i've definitely been part of that at times um and then if you really look at how they're treating themselves and how they're talking about themselves and how they are skipping. They're not, maybe they're not eating well. Maybe they're not getting them themselves enough sleep. Maybe they're not, they're skipping their mindful practices, their meditation schedule. They're, you know, I've, I've caught myself like, damn, I am not, I'm slipping, you know, I'm slipping on my self care a little bit. And then I re-engage and it's not to say that you have to check off all the different boxes every single day, but it's like, what needs your attention? You know, is it your, yes. your, body, your nutrition? Is it your sleep? Is it these things so that you could be that full force of energy? And again, going back to what Dijon was saying about the giving and the getting, it's like, you know, women are, are programmed to, to pour from an empty cup and to be depleted. So it probably doesn't even click to her that she's focusing on the other. Right. He's showing up and not looking at, Right. 
you know, how we're not showing Most up. Most of the time when we're, when we are thinking that it's the other person, I mean, that's, that's the biggest part of the work, the tantric work and the shadow work is that every time we think it's the other person, it's ultimately a reflection. It's an opportunity for us to see where we are at in our own healing journey, mm-hmm. because where we're, everybody is there, everything that we create in our life and that we choose and we allow in our life is a reflection of where we're at with ourselves mm-hmm. and loving ourselves. And mm-hmm. so, you know, to really honor the body, yes, you got to take care of yourself, but it's not just like throwing yourself in the next gym class or throwing yourself in the next diet program or throwing yourself, you know, it's, it, or like, you know, just making sure you're taking care of all of your, your, you know, the beauty needs that you feel are important to you. It, it's, it's about taking care of yourself, your C-E-L-L-F, right? Like, and making sure that you're also doing that work because that's ultimately what's creating the waves of energy. And when you do that work, the, all of that's, that's what you're really trying to create. And that's going to loosen the programming that's keeping you attracting some fake ass shit that ain't for you. Yeah. And like you said, like everything is, is working out for you. You're attracting it for a reason, that sort of thing. And then I also want to add in, because I always like to have multiple perspectives, but Freud said, sometimes a cigar is a cigar. You know, he was into dream analysis and a cigar is some, it's a penis. Everything's a penis in in Freud's dream analysis. Right. But he's like, sometimes you dream about a cigar. It's actually just a cigar. And I feel like sometimes that is just an asshole that you came across, you know, it doesn't, reflect on you but it's like how quickly did you pivot did you like shake off the energy that quickly like again it's part of your your test your program. well that's exactly the reflection on you because see this is the thing you have a choice this is one of the, the places you're at a crossroads so then you've got to access like okay i can either do what's comfortable and you'll that's going to be tempting that's what, probably what you're going to do is what's comfortable because that's what your neurological pattern knows it's like we always do it this way we drive this way But the truth is like, that's exactly the most beautiful point where you can decide is my, am I going to treat my body like it's a blessing or am I going to, am I going to again, use my body? Like I, I don't have a connection and like my mind is going to run things and I'm going to do what I always do. Because no, you, if you, if you attract a cigar, if you attract an asshole, no, that I, and this, again, it's a, I'm saying, no, it, it is my perspective. So I'm saying no, but like it, it is a reflection of the fact that there are assholes out there (laughs) and you get to have this divine discernment to now practice your discernment tool well again the the different levels the different waves is okay if i'm an energetic being and i'm honoring my body how much of my energy am i going to give this cigar this asshole or whatever right so how quick can i move on and then the other piece i'll say about saying that I attracted this, this is when you take responsibility for it, even if like clearly this person's being an asshole, but if you're like, how did I contribute to this? Or how did I let this in? Or how did I, like when you take responsibility for it, then you can change it. And right. that's the groundbreaking work of Louise Hay, which is wildly misinterpreted because people don't know the depth of it and they just look at the little bits and they try to implement. Well, I know that some people it's very hard depending on what you're dealing with to feel like a victim. Like sometimes that's too soon for folks um, to like, especially for people who have dealt with rape or right. It's like, wait, 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 wait. How I, I didn't fucking ask for that shit. Like who the hell was this person to take advantage? Like that is not okay. And I totally get that. Another question reframing is uh, you could say like, Whenever you're in a a place of, you know, like, my gosh, this person is in my field and I don't know how to deal with this. What is this here to teach me? Mm -hmm. And usually it's, it's to teach you to activate a certain part of your voice or to activate a a certain part of your being that you are not necessarily listening to. And so this person is this beautiful lesson, this reflection to activate that. The new pathway. (laughs) And so if you attract another asshole, whoa awesome opportunity. I get to set my boundaries from a place of love. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be that same bitch. I've always been. It was like, I didn't ask for your attention. And then he's like, well, fuck you then bitch. Fuck you. You're not that cute anyway. Right. I don't know. That's just like something that's happened to me before. I'm just impersonating. So then, you know, um, you know, if you choose now that you know that shit's gonna come back again because life occurs in patterns, it's just the way it goes. But we get to be spiral with that motherfucker. And when it comes, 
the next time that opportunity comes in and is right there, you're just like, wow, I'm so flattered. Thank you so much. Not right now. And if they stay at you, you're going to be a different, you're just going to have a different energetic setup. You're working with the different root system and connection to the earth and the elements. Like you got your fuck, you now your you got your ancestors on. There's so much different energetic pulse that's got your back that you might only just need to look at this person and and say it's, it's nice to meet you. I'm not interested. Mm-hmm. It's a pleasure. And then you forget by the time and they don't they 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 tongue tied. They, they like bitch can't even come out their mouth. Yeah. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Just shut it down and and pivot, shut it down and pivot. Presence is the essence. It's a present. Well, it goes back to what Mama Gina was saying too, about taking away your attention. And, and, and yeah, I hear you, what you're saying about acknowledging, you know, what the, the pain and everything you have to go through stages. So acknowledging. And I think it's good to own the fear, own the fear around like, you know, you do your body work, but yeah, once you decide to share your body with another being, that's going to bring things up that are going to be new that you're not dealing with when you're doing the work on your own. So then you express that. And so through communication with potential mates, you get to test the waters and see how open are they to heal their feminine with you. And like for you to cocoon each other back and forth and give each other turns of healing one another and what, what each other's bringing to the game. So it's okay, you know, baby steps and allow you know, where you're you, so ready to say no, see if you can massage it into a maybe. What would you need to make that a maybe? And express it. If well, they're like, oh, I, I could do that. Okay, that might be a yes. Okay, well, next it's a yes. Okay, then you just keep expressing from your space of truth and you'd be surprised. Lots of no's become yeses. And then um, if they, if they shift, you know, you just, it falls away. And I, and I really like what you said is is about how can you cocoon and nurture each other's and heal each other's masculine and feminine that's what relationships are really all about and if you're going to like a marriage and family therapist or a couples counselor that doesn't understand energy and how energy works you're gonna you're gonna hover at the surface and you're gonna do yes. things and you're gonna apply the formula but then the formula is not gonna work sometimes with that next you know creation because there's a different dynamic going on so you really have to go to the root of the issues and there's so many different layers of it because um you know just the three of us right here on screen we have shofar that's doing this really powerful men's work and then you're working with goddesses in different circles and then the two of you are working together with couples i'm i tend to i have couples that i work with but i tend to work with um a lot of times individuals who are who are either in relationship and trying to transform the relationship and they're doing their, they're owning their part. They're taking responsibility for their part or um, they just came out of a relationship and they want to stop that pattern and they want to up level to a, a new relationship. But we need to go underneath, like you're saying with the roots and change that, that, that system in order to do it. And that has to happen in relationship. So it has to happen with either a healer who's like your pseudo you know, it's another human that you create a relationship It's a different kind of relationship, but you're creating relationship with, or like in the group that Shafar and I are doing, we're learning those skills. You cannot cocoon and heal each other's masculine and feminine if you don't have the skills. And so if you don't have the skills to regulate your nervous system and communicate, you're just going to be like back and forth, back and forth. And there's couples that'll stay like that for decades and decades, just continually just in gridlock of misery going back and forth and not actually spiraling up as you're saying so there's so many different entry points and with that I want to um, talk about the body blessing ritual because you have a retreat coming up and maybe you can share um, within the context of this conversation what you're offering to women who are who can register I don't know if you have spots left still because it's coming up on we Friday do, we do we do have some spots left um And yeah, I guess I'm going to try to uh, make this in a minute because I know that we got some food here and we were like trying to honor our tomorrow morning. And I I, I definitely want to go check out the full moon tonight. Um, I feel like it's going to be really gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, for those who are listening, I would say, you know, this work is for those who are ready to tie up and to mend any loose ends that you're feeling with your body. 
um, you know, and what we called this tonight in, in ritual was this concept of leftovers and this idea, this, this Western concept and this very right-handed concept of leftovers that it's this distasteful and it's really unhealthy and it's, it doesn't work for us. But then to look at it from this tantric perspective and say, well, the parts of us that we feel like they're, they're there, they're like our leftovers um, actually also are nourishing and things that um, you know, are composted and what can we do to see what is of value and use that. And when we do that, we're able to take things and from instead of them decomposting, we can actually pickle things, right? We can take things on a new version of what we've known it to be, a new flavor. And so looking at these stories that have just been playing within the body for decades, um, and for some of us, they're ancestral stories that we're ready to like shed certain beliefs about us. So yeah, if this, if you're ready to do that and you wanna step into doing that, you know, through breath, sound, movement, um, ritual, um, we're gonna be doing it at Crown Point. And then on Saturday, we'll be meeting at Black's Beach, which is a clothing optional beach here in San Diego. And we have some protectors to guard our perimeter and we'll be running some ritual around just our comfort of wherever we're at with owning our bodies um, in the different phases, clothes on, clothes off, wherever we land. So I'm excited. If that excites you, for some that might be like, what the fuck? Hell no. All good. <laughs> might not be the time, but for some of you, you might be like, oh my gosh, that might just be exactly what I need right now. Well, I just encourage you to reach out. Um, it's this Friday. October, uh, it's October, September 25th. And uh, yeah, I'd love to have you. And there's going to be some very powerful goddesses there. Very, oh, very, yeah. Very, it's very powerful. Quite a powerful crew already. Congregation, just from what I know already. And um, yeah, and just loving on the body, getting yourself, doing your work, taking responsibility for that. You're part of the equation, which is this partnership that you're creating as well as the collective community that is so so important right now as we are so divisive and we're so polarized and we're coming up on the apex of the Pluto return um, for the U.S. which I think is in February of 2022 um, and that is like a reckoning with our past and the ways that we've harmed in the building of this country and how are we going to mend and repair? And if that's what Pluto's transformation, and you're talking about body blessing rituals to transform trauma, that's exactly what the planet and America in particular is up against right now. So we might as well be doing this work on our own so that we're prepared because you can't hide from this, these celestial energies. <laughs> they will penetrate you. They will penetrate you and you will feel the shift. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. And this is such a surprise full moon show to have the, the men here. And it just gets me excited to, to be gathering again. And thank you both for your valuable perspectives and um, being comfortable to share and also holding the space as you're always so good at Shafar. <laughs> you're always back there at this <laughs> that that stillness right? right and yeah i i really appreciate it and yeah it's 9 34 so let's honor our body boundaries for tonight yeah. and get some food and some rest and and some movement maybe and we'll <laughs> we'll reconvene so i will see you all back here on um next week but also okay so today's monday next monday um is another show and on tuesday is the first day of mercury retrograde so every mercury retrograde i do bedtime meditation and intuitive card pulls i've been doing that for a long time it's been super fun um and this round i'm doing it on zoom and uh i'm charged you can you know pay for it and come and be on zoom or if you're a subscriber you get it for free and it's a 444 dollar value um, so we'll be meeting on Zoom, doing card pulls and the meditation. It's a little more private, so we can contain our energy talking about rituals and blessings and, you know, keep keeping safe, <laughs> creating more of an intimate circle mm -hmm. and more intimacy. So inviting anybody who's watching this now and anybody that's here, um, 
if you're a subscriber, you'll see the code in there to register um, in, the, in the next week. I'll be sending out tomorrow and then probably another couple times. So that's that. Thank you everybody for joining Chad, Steffi, Golden, Preet, everybody who um, commented. Just really love the support and love you all. And thank you, Kirti. Thank you, Shafar. Adios, Dijon. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. Bye.